play or whatever else. Um, and this is public speaking. You've all seen public speaking before. It's just you just have to compare the different ones. So, um, before I get to debate, are there any questions? No? On the, on the yeah. time, is there one person speaking time the whole time, or is everybody speaking time? Strictly speaking, the judge keeps the official time. Um, you may have a situation where there are extra students in the room, and, there, and one of them volunteers to be the timekeeper. That's okay, as long as you can verify the other, that's, that's what the time is. Um, but uh, the time is really not, it needs to go on the ballot, just so we can see what we know the time was being kept and see what it was. Um, it's really only important if they go over time. And if they do, like I said, that's something that's assessed in the tabulation room. Um, you just need to make sure it's written down. And you would still rank the students just like you normally, regardless of what the time was. Um, so. But are there usually three judges? For, for preliminary rounds, there's usually one judge. Uh, if it's a semifinal or a final round, there's, there are almost always going to be three judges. So uh, the, the rounds that, uh, the earlier rounds on Saturday, those are going to be uh, almost entirely single judge. And then as the day goes on, we'll need more panel rounds, more three judge rounds. Yeah, that's good. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you speak at all to the way they should be dressed without actually sort of presenting professionalism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, generally speaking, yeah, they're supposed to be dressed professionally. I mean, I tell my students, uh, you know, you dress like you, you've seen how an attorney would dress or how, uh, you know, another politician, another professional person would dress. That's how you should dress at a tournament. Okay. And, and, and the vast majority of kids will be just fine. Another thing I, I, I tell them a lot too is that, uh, you know, if, if you have two speakers in front of you and you're a judge and both of them give really excellent speeches, they have about the same amount of time, um, like they're, they're, they're equivalent speeches. Um, one of them looks like he's running for president of the United States, the other one looks like a hobo, who's most likely going to win that, that battle, right? And so, and, and that's an extreme example, but. You know, in some cases, the difference between, you know, two and three on your ballot is going to be something small like that. Uh, there, there will be situations like that. And so, so yeah, they, uh, dressing appropriate, acting appropriate in the room, uh, you know, when it's, when it's their turn, when it's not their turn, um, just, you know, any, any sort of little thing. Now, I mean, the first thing to start with, obviously, is the performance and how that goes, but, you know, any kind of... If you're, if you're not sure in your mind, you gotta, you got to find tiebreakers. And there are a lot of different ways you can break ties. Um, and then just different judges choose different ways to, to the, the different criteria which ones they think are better or worse. Now, all the ballots, like the example that I gave you of reading oratory, will have the kind of criteria, the like different criteria that you can use uh, to evaluate them. It's some of the stuff I mentioned already, right? Eye contact, gesturing. Um, they're supposed to have an introduction. <coughs> of some kind, uh, with, with the exception of original oratory, um, all of these events are supposed to have an introduction uh, where they state the title and author of the piece, and uh, so, yeah, different stuff that you can look at. So, and it, it, like I said, if you're, on, if you're a judge for Saturday, uh, yeah, this is, this is, you're gonna spend more, most of your time here probably, and either a speech or an acting event. All right. We have a question and then we'll come back, but I got to try to get through as quick as possible. We've got nine minutes to explain the debate. Never done that before. Um, all right. Uh, for the debate events, um, the biggest thing, and, and it, this can be a, a, a difficult thing to do sometimes, but the, the most important thing is that you want to make a decision in a debate round based on how the competitors perform, how they argue, how they debate whether you agree with them or not. Uh, and, and that can be difficult sometimes. If someone's making an argument that you just, okay, this is nonsense, 
there's you know there's no way this is true or this this goes against you know my 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 values what I think is right and wrong um, that it's not it's not supposed to be about that it's supposed to be about how well did the debaters debate and sometimes debaters will choose arguments that seem a little odd because they have some sort of strategic value um, and so we want to we want to evaluate the students based on how well they perform. Um, and there are examples of debate ballots. We're probably not going to use the ones that are in the packet, but that's the example of what you would normally get at an Oklahoma tournament. Um, we're actually running debate on a computer, and so we'll have a, we have a computer program that will print ballots for us. Um, a whole lot more things. So, some basic things to know about debate. Um, if, well, first of all, I'll tell you this. Uh, don't, don't, I, 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 I will not put you in a CX round. Um, <laughs> CX is highly technical, like a lot of jargon. Uh, they talk really fast. It can be really disjointing if you're not used to it, if you're not, uh, if you not, don't have experience with it. And so, I, if, if I give you a CX ballot, it's like we're hurting bad. <laughs> like, we are way short on judges. And I just end up entering a bunch of judges. I, I don't think we're going to, I think we're going to. Lincoln Douglas and Public Forum, uh, for these two, um, those are a lot more palatable to uh, a general audience. Public Forum, in fact, is designed, well, actually, they're both designed that way. Lincoln Douglas has gotten away with it. But, um, so, Lincoln Douglas is a one on one debate, and they're going to debate a topic about uh, an issue of morality. Um, the current topic is, what is it, Olivia? Just governments ought to require employers pay living wage. That's what they're going to be debating on uh, this weekend, and so they're going to they're going to uh, they're going to talk about on um, if they're affirmative. Here's why it's important that they pay a living wage to everybody. If they're on the negative, they're going to say, okay, well, if we do that, that might cause some economic problem or might cause some other problem. Um, but the word "ought to" implies that there's a moral context to it. There's some moral reason why we should or shouldn't. So they're going to try to they're going to try to establish a case that is um, some terms for Lincoln Douglas debate that are good to know um, uh, value and criteria and convention. Okay, um, the generally speaking, there were a few kids that, that avoided this, but generally speaking, when when one side presents their case in Lincoln Douglas, they're going to present uh, a value. Say, here's my value for the debate. Here's what I think is the most important thing that we should be trying to achieve with this topic. So, uh, living wage example of one uh, on this topic would be uh, societal welfare. It's important that we we need to. Our goal needs to be our overarching value needs to be societal welfare, and if we or if we require employees to pay employers to pay a living wage, then society as a whole will be better off. And then the other team is going to get up and say, no, no, my value is individualism or free market economy or something like that. And they'll try to talk to the that. Um, the criterion is the is the philosophy. This is this is the big thing that sets Lincoln Douglas apart from other forms of debate. Criterion is the philosophy that the, the debater is suggesting that you use. To evaluate the arguments that are in the round. Um, so, uh, one example of that you that's, that's pretty typical is a social contract, and they'll say the way that we should evaluate the, the debate or evaluate the arguments in the debate is whether or not they uphold the social contract. Which, if you don't remember back from like government class or whatever, basically the idea is that there's a there's an un, there's an unspoken or unwritten agreement between society and the government. Um, we actually have a written agreement called the Constitution. That's a social contract. It's, a, it's an agreement that the, the people get certain rights and the government has certain responsibilities, but the government also gets, you know, people give up a few, some rights so the government can, like, you know, have police departments and military and things like that. Generally speaking, it's a very, uh, you can interpret it different ways, but generally speaking, it's a very, like narrow view of government. The government should be pretty small. <laughs> but you can argue it differently. And then the contentions. 
are really the main points that they're arguing specific to the topic. So if I say my value to societal welfare, my criteria and social contract, um, I'm gonna argue, my first contention is that um, the, the living wage is, well, let's see, uh, the living wage is, uh, if, if employers pay the living wage, then uh, society would be better off because there'd be less crime or society would be better off because we would have fewer people starving, something like that. Um, and so what you'll want to do when you're in a debate is you want to take some paper with you and, and, and two colors of pens, preferably, um, and you'll want to keep track of the arguments. So the, the first speaker gets up, the first affirmative speaker gets up, and he or she will say, okay, here's my, here's my value, and you write that down, here's my criterion, and here's contention one, contention two, and whatever else they have. And you want to write down and keep track of what the arguments are. It makes it a lot easier to figure stuff out when the debate's over. Because then you can look back and go, okay, these are the arguments they made, these are the arguments the opponents made, and you can, you can keep track of that way. In Lincoln Douglas, the way I teach students to do it is you get two sheets of paper, one for the affirmative side, one for the main. Because what will happen in the second speech, the negative will present there, Will present their case. Here's my value. Here's my criterion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they'll spend about half of their speech, roughly, attacking the other side's case. So they'll make arguments against it. And so what we what we generally do is we try to keep uh, pages like so. And so each each column is a different speech. So that's the that's the first one. This is the NC. That's the one AR. You don't need another shorthand for the speech. As long as you go one of the time across the uh, Anyway, each speech has its own column. And so you can kind of follow the progression of the arguments, right? So my value is this, and then the negative says, well, here's my argument against it. And then I say, no, your argument is wrong, and here's why. And they say, no, here's why it's right. And they kind of go back and forth. Okay? Um, also, and again, a lot of the. <coughs> The thing about debate is the debaters in the room kind of decide what happens with the debate, like what's important. Um, there are some, I'm, I'm, that's why I keep saying generally speaking, and most of the time these things happen. Um, and and I, usually I'm saying that because that's what I teach my students to do. But um, what, uh, in the last couple of speeches in Lincoln Douglas, what they'll do is they'll give you voting issues. Uh, they'll say, here, here are the reasons why I think I've won this round. Here's what I, here's what I think is an important voting issue for this round. And they'll, they'll describe it and they'll say, and they'll reference the arguments that they made earlier in the debate. So, uh, anyway, the, the long story short for any form of debate is take notes, keep track of the arguments, um, and they'll kind of, they, they'll kind of emphasize the things that they want you to, to write down usually. Um, just keep track of the arguments and decide who did the better debate. Um, there, are, on debate ballots, there are all, there's also a place for speaker points. This is a separate evaluation. The debate round is supposed to be evaluated based on the arguments made and who's making the better, the stronger arguments. Speaker points are, it's, it's the way you're, we talked about like evaluating these, these events. And so it's how well did they speak, you know, gestures, eye contact, things like that. Now, a lot of times debate eye contact's not really that big a deal in debate because a lot of times they're reading off, they don't have, they don't memorize it. They kind of write their arguments on the fly as they go, and so they're gonna they're gonna kind of read off a page. But the, the better ones, the ones that are more prepared, will, will spend they'll they'll read off and kind of look up at you as well. So, uh, but anyway, speaker points are not the same thing as who wins the round. Uh, in fact, we have what we call a low point win, which is when a debater wins a round, but their opponent was a better speaker, right? So, so yeah, two different things. Um, so no one's shown up to play a video yet, so I'm going to finish this last event here and talk about it. Um, so this that's the basics of flowing. Um, The, the last event I want to talk about is a public forum 